Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 38 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the ASP.NET Wizard Control events. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 35, 36 and 37 of this video series. Let's flip to Visual Studio drag and drop the wizard control onto the web form. We know that a wizard control is a collection of wizard steps. By default we get three wizard steps. Let's copy and paste this to get the third wizard step and let's get rid of this ID property and change the step title to step 3. Let's flip to the design mode and let's go to the properties of the wizard control by right clicking on that and select properties and to view the list of events supported by the wizard control click on the events icon. The first event that we will examine today is the active step changed event. This event gets fired whenever the active step of the wizard control is changed. And to change the active step of the wizard control, you can do that by clicking on these navigation buttons, next, previous, etc. Or by clicking on the sidebar buttons. To generate the event handler for this active step changed event, double click on the text box there, which will generate the um, event handler. Now let's say all I want to do here is to print the active step index of the wizard control. To do that, response.write and I want to print a message saying that active step changed to. Okay, now how do I get the active step of the wizard control? wizard1 dot there is a property called active step index and this is an integer property and obviously if I want to print that I need to convert that to string using the two string method so now when we run this and whenever we change the active step index of the wizard control by clicking on the navigation buttons or the sidebar buttons you know that message will be printed active step change it to one active step change it to two and remember this is a zero based index collection that's why when I am on step two I mean step 3 it actually shows the step index is 2. When I am on step 1 it shows the step index is 0. Alright, the next event that we will examine today is the cancel button click event. Now by default the wizard control will not show the cancel button. For the cancel button to be displayed flip to the properties page and then there is a property called display cancel button which is false by de default turn that to true. Okay, now this cancel button click is fired whenever somebody clicks that cancel button. Now, if somebody clicks that cancel button and if you want to do some server side processing, that's when you'll make use of this event handler. Double click to generate the event handler. And all I want to do here is print a message saying that cancel button clicked. Okay, so when we run this and then when we click the cancel button, as you might expect, that message cancel button clicked will be fired. And remember, this cancel button is shown on every step of the wizard control. So you click that cancel button on any step, you will you will have that message. Okay, now remember, if you just want to navigate away from the wizard control, maybe to another page or to an external site, then uh, you can simply do that using a property called cancelled destination page URL. The, the page URL where you want to go to when somebody clicks that cancel button. Okay, so if your intention is to just navigate to another page within your application or to an external site, you don't really need an event handler, a server side event handler to do that. You can just do that using this cancel destination page URL property. All right. So the next event that we will look at today is the next button click event handler. Uh, before we'll, we'll talk about the finish button click in just a bit, but first let's look at next button click event. Obviously, as you might expect, this event gets fired whenever somebody clicks the next button. Okay, let's generate the event handler. And the important thing to notice here is the type of object that's coming into the event handler method wizard navigation event arguments okay the this object exposes current step index and the next step index properties okay so if you ever want to do some processing based on the current step index or the next step index you know you can make use of this object okay now let's say all i want to do is i want to print the current step index number and the next step index 
number whenever somebody clicks this button. So e dot current step index and just to indicate that it is the current step index let's put that there and since this is an integer we need to convert that to string and let's put an HTML break there so that it comes in its own line okay let's copy paste that and change this to next step index okay and another thing to notice as far as this wizard navigation event arguments object is concerned there's another property a cancel property and if you look at the IntelliSense it's a boolean property meaning it expects a true or a false now look at the look at what IntelliSense states here it gets or sets a value indicating whether it gets or sets a value indicating whether the navigation to the next step in the wizard should be cancel so if you set this property to true then it wouldn't allow us to navigate to the next step in the wizard control okay so e dot cancel is equal to true if I set that to true I wouldn't be able to go to the next step let me run this and see what actually happens so the page loads and then when I click that so currently I am on step one of the wizard control when I click this next look at that okay current step is equal to zero next step is equal to one but then I am still on step one why is that because you have set e dot cancel is equal to true so that's not allowing you to move to the next step in the wizard control so if for any reason you want to prevent the user from moving to the next step maybe because he didn't fill in a required field so you don't want to allow him to go to the next step of the wizard control unless and until you do that and you know he does that then you can make use of that property so there are a variety of real-time scenarios where you can actually make use of that event okay so let's do this programmatically let's say on step one instead of always disabling the um, you know movement to the next step let's drag and drop a checkbox control onto the web form and let's call this checkbox cancel and then let's say cancel navigation is the text so if somebody checks this checkbox this is on step one of the wizard control so if somebody checks this checkbox and then when they click the next button they shouldn't be allowed to go to the next step but whereas if they don't check it then they can go to the next step so if I want to programmatically do that I can say if checkbox dot cancel I mean checkbox cancel dot checked if that is checked then e dot cancel is equal to true okay you can either do this or you can simply say e dot cancel is equal to checkbox one checkbox cancel dot checked because checkbox cancel dot checked returns a boolean property okay a true if it is checked a false if it is not checked if it is checked we don't want to go to the next step so e dot cancel will be true in that case and will not be allowed to move to the next step so let's go ahead and run this at this time and then when I select cancel navigation I click the next button look at that current step index is 0 the next step index is going to be 1 but if I uncheck that and then when I click that I am moving to the next step okay so let's look at the finish button click as you might expect the name states this event is fired whenever somebody clicks the finish button on the final step of the wizard control double click to generate the event handler and look at the object it's the same object so on the finish button as button click as well you'll have access to the current step and the next step okay let's copy that and paste that there and when I run that and when we actually move to the final step of the wizard control look at that the let's click the finish button once again the current step index is 2 and the next step index is also 2 because that's the last step we don't have any more steps that's why current step index and the next step index are the same there
okay and previous button click as you might expect this event is fired whenever somebody clicks the previous button on the wizard control and if I double click to generate the event handler look at that you again have access to the current step index and the next step index and if you want to cancel the navigation to a previous step you can do that using the cancel property e dot cancel and sidebar button click whenever somebody clicks the sidebar buttons any of these buttons then this event gets fired and again you have the same object here and access to the same properties okay so those are the different events of the wizard control and pre-render event this event is fired just before the wizard control is rendered On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.